In this episode, we have a new member joining us. Uh, he's a permanent member of Connect the Dots. His name is Robbie. He's a sophomore at Roosevelt High School. And in the future, he wants to become an entrepreneur. So just like myself, he wants to go to college for business. With that said, let's begin. <laughs> back to another episode of Connect the Dots, a place where we share experiences, build relationships, and learn how to cope with our everyday challenges. My name is Elder White, and I'm joined here again with our new, mem- our new member, Robbie. Hello. And in today's episode, we will be talking about how to maintain and live a healthy lifestyle with being blind or visually impaired. So to first begin, living a healthy lifestyle is no different for us and the decided people. However, for us, of course, we can't. We um, have the disadvantage, uh, disadvantage of not seeing, obviously, for us blind people. So we do it in a different way. And we use different resources and technologies to help us achieve our goal of a healthy lifestyle and how to maintain um, a healthy lifestyle. So for Robbie and I both, we both, uh, at school, participate in physical education. Well, Robbie's because he's a freshman, he, he does PE, and I participating in weight training. So first, we can start with Robbie and how he can he will share with us how he does PE and how he does he adapts different activities that will benefit him and his visual impairment. All right. So with me having a visual impairment in school well mainly PE is very hard on me hard on me and also for the teacher because they have to make the lessons different for you because not really different but they need to include you in a different way than you normally would because for people who are sighted say if you're playing like frisbee or softball you can see where you're hitting the ball you can see where the frisbee is right but for someone who's visually impaired, right, that's just me. But I can, pro- with my vision, I can probably still find it eventually. It'll just take maybe a minute or two. But, like, it takes a while for me to get things down. And they, at school, they want us to be able to, they don't find disabilities any different from people who are normal or that don't have any disabilities, I should say. But they want to include us to become, to make us feel like we're not any different from the person next to us. And that's kind of true. We are not different. We just have extra challenges that they don't have to deal with. If you agree with me, that's what you can say. Yeah. So... You know, going through these kinds, because you know, for Robbie and I both, we both have the same PE teacher, um, and he he adapted. Of course, he had to adapt it different for me because my our vision levels are you know drastically way different. different. Yeah, way way different. You know, I'm going completely blind. Robbie can still see a lot. <laughs> he can still read print. So, you know, it's just different, but not not the same method is going to work for the same people. You know. Something that may work for a blind person is not going to work for a visually impaired person. And something that works for a visually impaired person is not going to work for a blind person. So, you know, that's one of the things we'll be covering uh, in today's episode is how Robbie and I both, you know, navigate, I guess, throughout our physical our physical uh, aspect, you know, of taking care of our body. Can you uh, stop the recording? Just to check out on you. So, Robbie and I both, uh, we, so like I said earlier, at Roosevelt, I am in weight training, and I had to learn how to navigate throughout the room because you know, if I walk the wrong direction, I'm going to get hurt, you know, by all the hanging, all the, the weights, the bench presses, you know, a lot of stuff, you know, a lot of obstacles in the room. So, you know, I think that's one of the first things that 
I would recommend a blind person. You know, if you cannot see the objects around you like myself, that you would work on orientation. Because if you don't know where you're going, you know, you can't do anything. You know, so for me, the first thing I did when I first started that class was I went into the room before the school year started. Luckily, it was open. And I asked the teacher if I could do an orientation of the room. So, so for me, that room is it's a pretty, it's a good sized room. You know, the layout is pretty easy. You go inside, in the center of the room is all the bench presses. Uh, towards the back of the room, it's all, the, you have a shoulder press, you have your pec flies machine. If you work out, you know what that is. Um, you have your chest press, which is like the machine version of the bench press. You have your back machine, so upper your back. And then on the right side of the room, you have all your dumbbells. And these are arranged from five pounds to heavy. I don't know what the heaviest is, because I never need to go on the heaviest. But, you know, that's how, that's how most of them, I assume, are being arranged. You know, in most areas you go, because if it's not, then it's just completely unorganized. I mean, it's just hard to, like, to figure out what, what weight you need and where it is. And then also in the, on the third corner of the room, the third wall of our um, weight room is our leg machine. You know, so pretty easy navigation, uh, pretty easy to navigate throughout the room. You just have to know what you need and where it is. So, you know, for me, that's one of the main things that I made sure that I knew, you know, it's for safety and also just so I can go in there independently by myself and just work out as I as I see best. Yeah. So how about you, Robbie? How how is it like for you? Like how have you adapted uh, like certain activities for your vision? All right. So for me, it's not really anything different. It just I I do the same thing as you. I get an orientation at the room before I go there, or if say I'm well, since I don't do stuff at school, I normally would just uh, go, I would just normally go to an actual gym or whatever. So when I go to that gym, I just ask my parents or whoever's with me, like, what's around in there and to help me, you know, understand what's in there so then I can get around properly because... You know, to someone who's blind or even visually impaired, even for myself it would be visually impaired, even someone, for me, it would be um, hard because I need to be able to see to what to do because actually here's a kind of bad story, but even, well, so my dad, which he's not visually impaired, but this just goes to show how important it is for us to be careful he just got his rib dislocated wow. and he got it put back into place uh well it naturally healed back into place but he did something but he wasn't paying attention to what he was doing he was looking at his phone um he was working out on the leg um weights uh the one i think it's you have to push something and then it pulls the weights up and then you slowly go back but he did something so his rib popped out of place, and every time he, like, rolls on one side of when sleeping, it hurts. So that kind of proves that you need to be very, very, very careful when it comes to exercising because exactly. you could hurt yourself. And going back to my dad's thing real quick, he's going to be like this. He's going to be in this pain stage for about six weeks. Dislocating an internal bone in your body, not really fracturing, like fracturing your arm, it's not as bad as like hurt. Like, think of it as like dislocating your rib, it's pretty much the same thing as you broke your arm or whatever, it takes six weeks to mm -hmm. get back. So it, it's gonna take a long time if you get hurt and you need, that's why you need to make sure you know what you're doing when you're at the gym. Yeah, because <clears throat> yeah, you do not want a 50 pound dumbbell falling on your foot. Because <laughs> that's gonna hurt. That's gonna break all your Oh my toes. gosh, I can't even imagine. I mean, thank God I never got to 50 or 25. <laughs> so, 
um, you know, yes, it's a, it, it, you know, it, it shows, you know, that, you know, you really must be careful and know your surroundings and where you are just to keep your, yourself and others safe around you, yeah. Because I know for me, when I lift weights, when I do, sh when I'm working my shoulders, there's one exercise where you have to put the weights in front of you. You have to, ex you get, you have to extend your arm out in front of you. And I know one time I was doing that and then I accidentally hit this person in the face with the weight. So, that's another thing you want to watch out for. <laughs> Sorry. You know, is make sure you know where people, live, where people are around you and, you know, to not hurt them because <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of bad. <laughs> yes, Ezra, that's, I think, the first thing that you need to, other, actually, the first thing is to make sure you yourself are safe and the second is to make sure that you're not going to hurt anyone else. Yeah. That's why even, see, me being a Boy Scout, this kind of ties into healthy living, but it also doesn't, but it's just a quick story. When you're a Boy Scout and you get the totem ship, which is to be able to use a knife or axe or any sharp object, right? You need to be able to um, know what a blood circle is. That kind of works the same with the weights when you're doing that sort of exercise. So the blood circle is you make sure that if you have a circle around you that no one can enter when you're using the blade so then you don't hurt them. So that should go the same way with weight. So you guys should make sure to do that. Like yeah. Spin in a circle. So then, or if you're gonna stay in one position, just make your arm go across in front of you, holding the weight to make sure that you won't hit anyone. And that's what I do. <laughs> now. Yeah, that's, the, that's what I started to do now. <laughs> but um, you know, and we've been talking about weights and lifting for a while now. But you know, living healthy is also you know it's a very very broad. Um, category, you know, things to talk about, you know, like healthy eating, which I know everyone wants to start eating healthy, but especially here in Hawaii, the cost of living is so high that it's just more cheap, it's just much more, not only cheaper, but it's more convenient just to go to McDonald's and go pick up a burger or something, than you know, to go to the grocery store or Whole Foods, which we recently got actually, and you know, go buy some organic products yeah but you know also eating healthy is something you know that I have been trying to do myself and I've discovered some apps that are voiceover friendly on the app store Robbie and I are both Apple users we don't really um, use Android a lot or ever I should say but there's this app on the app store it's called MyPlate so basically, what my plate is, uh, like I said, it's voiceover friendly. It's an app that tracks how much calories you're, continue, you're um, taking in a day. So, for example, whatever, let's say you have, I don't know, cheeseburger for lunch, and you have some steak for dinner, and for breakfast, pancakes, I guess. So, after every meal, what you would do is you would search up that food item in their catalog and you would add that item to your tracker and what that tracker does is it calculates how many calories were in that um, that specific item so it lets you know if you're eat if you're, you're eating responsibly if you're eating unresponsibly not responsibly you know so it really helped me because I haven't noticed you know because for me and Robbie both you know, I would say, we just eat. Yes. You know, it's food. Just eat it. <laughs> Who cares? If it can go in your mouth, just go for exactly. it. Exactly. So, you know, of course, he and I both, we have passed the 2,000 calories limit a day. You know, because it's, it's, it's what it is. We can have it at most 2,000 calories for the average person if we can um, take in a day. Yeah, it's probably taking like twice that honestly you know which is weird because I'm very skinny I eat a lot but I guess my metabolism is so fast it, it just burns off so real easy you know how about you Robbie okay so with me my 
metabolism is not very fast, so I don't really burn off things that much. So that's why I need to start working out more because every time I eat something, I need to work ten times harder to get rid of that weight that I just gained from it. And I really do need to start shaping up, but I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Yeah. You know, so other than eating healthy and lifting weights, there's a lot of activities that blind, both blind and visually impaired people can um, partake in, like running, going for jogs, walking. You know, I love walking. You know, it's fun and it's just to get out there and cruise. Yeah. And running, you know, you might question, you know, how can a blind person run? Can't see anything. You know, <laughs> so I remember the first time I. Started running for PE, and yes, the coach still made me run even though I couldn't see, which is actually a good thing because you know it was fun. But it wasn't fun; it was tiring. But you know, yeah. So what I did was, um, see, I was lucky at Roosevelt. Our track is it encircles our field, so it goes around the perimeter of our field. That's so, with all tracks. Huh? That's, that's with all. That's tracks. all tracks. Yeah. Really? Oh, I don't know that. Okay. So what I did was I followed, I just followed the edge of the track basically. You know, I ran along the edge. Luckily, ours doesn't have anything around it. There's no poles in the way or anything like that. But um, so you know, that's a, one suggestion I would make is follow the edge of the track. Or another thing, I tried this out before when I first started PE, but it never worked out so good. Um, it depends on the situation, of course, or the type of environment you're running in. So I tried running with a person, and I guess because it's in a big oval, our track is like a big oval kind of thing, so it really didn't work out, you know, the best. So I, I, they just switched me to run independently. However, when I go running with my family, it's a different story because we're not running on the track, we're just running on like a trail. So you know, it's a lot more easier to hold on to someone um, and just jog with them. So how about you, Rob? Is there any, any any differences? Yeah, there is differences. For me, since I still have vision, since I'm visually impaired, it it is difficult because you get tired, right? And with someone who's visually impaired, you tend to strain your eyes more when you're working them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's like I need to get more water. That's the thing, because someone who's visually impaired will have to get more water because it's you need the water to. Be to continue going because you will you'll just you'll pretty much I guess in this term you'll pass out and die from it not legitimately but you will you pass out you pass I don't out know about dying but I mean I guess it could happen <laughs> <laughs> it could but like you'll you'll get really hot and you'll probably pass out from heat exhaustion yeah and that's why the water is most important and I had an experience with Boy Scouts where I did a hike, the Cobra Head Stairs. So th that was a really hard oh. one because I went on the day that it was super, like, hot mm -hmm. and humid. So that day, I really should have brought more water, but I didn't. So on the way down from there, I ended up passing out. Not on the trail, but they saw me getting super tired, so I went down to the side and just knocked out for 45 minutes until the other scouts could come and bring me water to cool me off. Wow. Yeah. It was very hard. Mm. I, ke I kept going in and out of consciousness pretty much mm -hmm. in that 45 minutes. How long ago was this? Two years? Maybe a year. Oh, mm -hmm. It was long. Yeah. Just so... You know, make sure you have water. <laughs> yeah, that's that's for all of us, even me. So you know, I guess like we said in the beginning, being blind or visually impaired does not affect what you can do physically. You know, you cannot work out. We cannot go for runs, go for jogs, go for walks. You know, just gotta make sure we all do it safe. Yeah. Safe. That safety is your number one priority. Exactly. Yeah. And, you know, just be mindful of the people around us and, you know, of what's around us, our environment, you know, and 
and everything's gonna be everything's gonna be good. Because although a lot of people don't like working out, you know, working out is actually a really good, you know, the path you take may be rough, but the view at the top is very rewarding. You know, that's just like working out. It's hard to be. Um, the word I'm looking for. It's hard to be constant, consistent. It's hard to be consistent. Uh, working out every day, as much as much as you can, you know. But the reward is, you know, it's just so satisfying. Yeah. So you know, that's about it. Do you have anything else to add, Robbie? Not really. That was you. We covered it all already. All right. So you know, like we said, make sure you have water. Be safe. And hopefully the next episode will be more strong, I guess is the word. <laughs> <laughs> you know. But yeah, I hope you all have a good day. Thank you for watching, listening. Thank you for listening to this episode. If you have any questions, comments, feedback, please feel free to email us at connect the dots at guidedogsofhawaii.org. And we will be sure to get back to you as soon as we can. And with that, aloha. Thank you. Thank you.